open forum and in introductions. I mean, should we, let's do some introductions first. So, um, Chad Lewis, Klein Financial, um, Asset Manager for 1600 Vine. Kevin Kaiser, Cerruti Company, um, we've been at buildings also, including the one you're sitting in. Gallon Vita, property owner. Darcy Derber, property operations for Robertson Properties Group, where uh, several properties in Hollywood. Kind of home. Popcorn eater. The fun to see. Steve Seiler, Bid Security. Lauren Kubin. David McCubin. Mark Stevenson, Hollywood United Methodist Church. Julie Hedman, um, CEO of Saban Community Clinic. John Tronson, uh, Whitley Court Partners. Frank Stefan, Claire West Development, uh, on a couple properties uh, in East Hollywood. David Green, Pantages Theater. Gary <coughs> Morrison with the bid. And Monty Kumar, CIN Group. Uh, any other introductions, Frank? Oh, man, you with the bid. Oh. Joe. Uh, Joe Salazar, Pit Security. Um, and, it's and Marco Gargano's on the phone. Okay. Um, just move on to minutes. Yeah, they were sent out on um, Monday. Okay, thank you. Good second. Thank you. All in favor? Right. Thank you very much. Um, Trent's report, Gary, do you want to take over because Mark um, has a plan in emergency? Right, Mark, so here's, I think Joe. Yep, I have it. Yep, so this will be very brief. Um, this is just our statements through August 31st. Um, everything seems to be going as planned. Um, we had a little bit of a mix up with our accounts receivable that uh, I'm working through with Gersey right now. And other than that, everything else in here is pretty much, like I said, par for the course. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that if you look under the balance sheet on the first page for the assets uh, for the HPOA CHC account, this is where our funds go from our management contract. Uh, you'll notice that there's a pretty hefty amount of cash in there, and the reason being is that uh, we need to reimburse the Hollywood account for their services. So we are in the process of doing that. So that balance will go down probably on the next statement and we'll pay more attention to the next quarter statement and, uh, and that'll be reflected in our balance for the quarter account. So other than that, that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple on these things okay. this month. Okay. Are there any questions on the comments? Okay. Um, So we need a motion. Okay. Okay. So, so moved. The 15th. It's today. Today. Right. Yeah, he filed, he got us an extension to November 15th. Okay. So, what made a motion? Second. Gallo, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed to the top Thank you. So on the budget, we actually, uh, believe it or not, have been working on the 2017 budget. So um, I discussed this with Monica yesterday. What um, what we want to do is bring back to you at the next board meeting on the 20th um, a draft of the budget, and then we'll do a final uh, version on the 17th, which is your annual meeting. So um, what I'm going to ask is if our streetscape chair and security chair can 
coalesce with staff and the finance committee and we'll work on um, the draft budget. And you know, the, the dollar amounts are not gonna change a whole lot next year, but some of the program ideas or some of the program priorities we'll wanna discuss and be, begin to present that to you next month for your input. So what I'll, I gotta work out our calendars, um, see when we can do this, it's probably, you know, gonna happen maybe the first weekend in October, and I'll let the board know if anybody wants to come and participate in that conversation, you are more than welcome. Okay, okay. new business. So, um, you know, in the past couple of months, well actually we didn't meet in August, but uh, the security committee uh, in July, we had a, a full meeting kind of looking at the state of homelessness in uh, LA and LA County to bring the security committee up to speed on some of the uh, trends and the, the facts um, with respect to the population that not only we are tracking here in Hollywood, but you know, the city. Um, we're, we're all seeing evidence of a situation that does, does not seem to be improving. Um, and uh, in, to that end, I think, well, some of this may be redundant if you're in the security committee, but public opinion polling on the homeless issue is um, polling very strong, that the voters are very concerned. They're actually in open-ended questions when asked what, are, what issues or concerns are impacting the city of LA. Homelessness is emerging as number one or, or two, which has not been the case in the past, typically you have traffic or public safety or what have you. So it's seen as a, as a window in time that may not be open for a long time, again, to try to get some, um, some finance measures passed because you know the city and the county uh, came together earlier this year on a whole host of strategies um, that are integrated strategies the city and county need to work together on. The city is generally responsible for things like land use and zoning and housing and the county provides the service side of that equation, mental health, health, <coughs> criminal justice, diversion, substance abuse, etc. So I think what is new and different about 2016 is that our policymakers recognize that we cannot meaningful, meaningfully address this issue without putting more money into the system. So this measure HHH is the first of, I think, two things we're gonna see in the coming six months. Um, measure HHH um, was approved by the city council in August to place a general obligation bond on the November ballot. That's what this little brown sheet is. And what this is, it's a, um, it is a, uh, a tax that is applied to every parcel in the, in the city. Um, the interesting thing is that if you are a homeowner and uh, uh, you, let's say you own a million dollar home, your annual tax will be about $25, $26 a month. So it is based on assessed value of property. Um, so what it does is it assesses um, every parcel in the city of Los Angeles over a 10 year period to raise $1.2 billion. And that money will be used to leverage federal and private funds to build permanent supportive housing for um, chronically homeless people. It has to get a two-thirds vote of the electorate, which um, normally would be rather difficult, but the feeling is that um, given the pervasiveness of the problem and it's on the top of voters' minds, um, it's very possible. The interesting thing, I was just at a meeting today, and there's either, I think there's 28 measures on 24 ballot pages or 24 measures on 28 ballot pages. I can't remember which one. But it's going to be a massive ballot. You want to take a sack lunch when you go to vote this year. And um, uh, the city measures are, are the last measures to appear on your ballot. So we got to get people to measure H and get them to vote yes. Survive. So um, what we're asking today is just that the Hollywood Property Owners Alliance, HEB, add its name to the list of organizations that are endorsing measure HHH. Um, and Sunset and Vine, CHC, voted accordingly on Monday. Um, it's something that you can do as a nonprofit. It's a, it's a ballot measure campaign. It's not a candidate campaign. <clears throat> so um, I would hope that we could add our name to the rather, rather large list that's forming on this. So we are okay with this? Mm -hmm. You mean adding your name? No, I mean <coughs> the fact that we can endorse this versus a 
because we're limited to certain degree on what we put our names on. Right. And this right here is, is okay. Because <laughs> it's a ballot measure. It's not okay. a candidate. Yeah, we had a relatively robust conversation in the security committee about um, from some concerned stakeholders about how how's this money getting going to be spent? Is it just going to be wasted? Um, and uh, Kerry um, gives a very informative presentation on the multi-layered strategy that uh, that it, it's going to require to actually be successful with various different agencies in both the city and the county. Um, so it was it was it was compelling. It looks like they they've got an organized effort to really take. Take this on. It's eight to ten thousand units. Um, what's our what's our home population? Eighteen thousand. Well, the city of LA's homeless population is about twenty six. So this is focused on the chronically homeless right. population. Yeah. So and then they have a plan in place to where you get the the most effective um, you know, the people who are most at risk, and then the people that are easiest to. Um, you know, to be able to place where they just, they're going to be in and out after they get a job and they're back on their feet again. So it just increases the effectiveness of, uh, of it. Um, there's just so many different stratas of homeless, some of the, the, the young street wanderers who, you know, it's a lifestyle, they're not going to go into housing. Um, so there's a lot of that out there that will minimize the 20,000 number, but it's, it, it Something the security committee thought was a good idea. But even though this is a city measure, this is in conjunction with what the county's also doing in the state. So everybody's throwing in. It's yeah, not so just... I, I meant to mention that the county um, could not come to consensus on what measure to put on the November ballot for homelessness. So they're planning to put it on a March ballot to do a sales tax increase. And that would be a, a one two punch. And they did discuss it a lot at the county. They just couldn't agree which way to go. So I think the political will is there, and obviously I think it is at the state level. Um, we think it would be at the federal level, but ironically they they cut off the funds for, that they were previously given. Yeah, so, and we're gonna touch upon this in the security discussion. The federal government has stopped funding um, shelter, emergency shelters and outreach uh, because they're shifting their funding to permanent housing, hence the closure of the past shelter. The loss of those resources. So there's a, there is some tectonic plates moving in how these these issues are being funded now. Is there a program where it shows like a plan of you're going to create or not a, a citizens or an oversight committee with administrators? How much is going to pay people that are administrating this versus how much is going directly to the, the building of these homes? Yeah. So. Um, Home for Good, the LA Chamber and United Way Joint Task Force um, is seeking a seat on this oversight committee and Gary Tobin, who's the head of the LA Chamber, is one of the names that you'll see on the ballot um, arguments. So there's definitely a desire by the business community to make sure that these funds are optimized into the actual housing. Just, I wanted to, excuse me, uh, just, in a previous life, when I was living in Washington, I worked for the mayor, Mayor Adrian Fenty, and um, helped lead some efforts around housing the homeless and shutting actually our shelter. Um, we were housing folks in a building that was a nursing home that we had condemned. It was too bad to be a nursing home, but then we were putting people in there living. Um, so just wanted to follow up and just echo Carrie's comments that really this strategy, um, shutting the shelters, moving to permanent, this is this is considered the gold standard, and really, it does take an enormous amount of capital, and that's the only reason why people don't do it. Um, the other things are much more band-aids, so just wanted to echo. We've had enough, certainly, of band-aids, and uh, as you know, I certainly want to help us uh, aid our chronic homeless individuals here in the community. I'd love to be able to set aside a time to talk to my good friend Gallo, because one concern that I do have is, is that it doesn't necessarily address mental health issues and substance abuse issues, which is prevalent among uh, many of the chronic homeless individuals. So on the one hand, I, I know it addresses a very important need. I'm just concerned about this other aspect. And, and again, I know Gallo and I have talked previously, and it's just something that 
maybe we want to continue to discuss. Absolutely. No, I think I think my understanding of Triple H though is that this is going to be a vetted process where clients will be going from our local areas through the county through a certain process and ultimately not just put somebody in but be ready to go in. So I think right. It is. It's, it's, it's very a, much a you know it's, it's it's not going to be easy to get into these. So right. you're going to have to you know fit a certain criteria. Um, and obviously be willing to go but yeah just the the, the guys who are just temporarily having having fun on Hollywood Boulevard are probably not going to be the, the, the guys that end up in this type of housing yeah. right yeah. just one other comment on this and just to follow up um, most of these folks are eligible for health insurance um, and, and working hard to get them but they also have a couple of initiatives that are coming their federal and state initiatives that are coming down from the state whole person care and health homes that are both exactly targeted to the chronically mentally ill, to the homeless, and what it helps pay for is case management and wraparound services, mm -hmm. which at Savon, when we serve a lot of the homeless, we don't get really paid for that piece, and it's really expensive and hard to do. It's not, and that's, it's just, it needs a lot of effort, and permanent supportive housing only can work with that component. So there are some other funding sources. Now, do they all line up at the right time and all of that? That's the challenge with policy and programs, but there are other places that are going and some movement towards that. So we're looking for a motion to support this and lend your money to the organization list. I'll move it. Thank you. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, they are going to wait. Part the second one. Yeah. So just to, to um, David, Don, and I, um, we had many phone calls, many discussions around the new um, slate of board members, and so we had 14 people. I think that was the final count who were on the list. Four, um, four were coming back. So, um, but we talked with everyone, and it was a very, you know, very even geographic location, the industry specific. And so we're, we're happy that Mark's coming back, Michael, Evan, um, Julie, who just started. Um, and then it's uh, Katie Zandora. And what she represents the- Zandona. Zandona, sorry. Thanks. She represents um, Olin's property at Natatusos. Yeah. And so then the other item that we were also doing was um, at the next meeting, we're looking for officers for next year. And so we're looking for either yourselves or if you can recommend someone from president, vice president, and treasurer. And secretary. So, so yeah, the nominating committee will work on that slate to bring back to the November meeting to be elected. We're willing to hear what everyone has to say. If anybody wants to step up, please let one or all of us know. And the only thing I would add to Chad's report is uh, Alyssa. Yes. Was thank you. One of the candidates and uh, just so that everybody is clear, she took herself out of the running for personal reasons at the beginning of our meeting. Uh, Carrie let us know that. So I, I thought she might be here today because I wanted to thank her for all of her service. She was She's getting married. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, so there's it's all going to be some other things. Yeah. 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 But she was still going to stay active with on, on, on different um, organizations and groups, and, and she'd like to be considered Great. So, that's great. Um, so that being said, thank you to Alyssa, also to our committee members, Chad, David, and Greg Beck. No, it's oh, I'm sorry, John Lynch. Yeah, sorry, it was last year. Last year. Yeah. Um, because there are a lot of candidates um, and a lot of interviews. And I know 14, I think, season. is the most that I yeah. can ever have. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's good. Though. Yeah, it's it's great. Absolutely. There's, uh, there, there's a lot of talent in Hollywood that hopefully uh, we will all put to good use. In one last thing. In terms of uh, anyone wanting to serve as an officer, uh, you cannot be on the nominating committee. That's correct. So Chad and I, at the moment, are the nominating committee, but obviously 
Resign. Yes, yeah. you can resign. I am not resigning from the nomination. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nor am I in this <laughs> And Katie's great. She's wonderful. Great, great. Um, okay, so our next item, which is B, is actually the security item. So we're going to go there. I'm going to move it up just so my friends can see it. Very good. Do you want to uh, tee up the average pilot or do you want to Sure. Um, for a variety of reasons, uh, we have, the security committee is recommending that we, uh, uh, that we pursue a homeless outreach a pilot program, um, which would entail a um, plain closed, non-uniformed, uh, obviously not armed, um, uh, uh, outreach person with the surplus money that we have from the security uh, budget. Um, we just, uh, since the, the people at PATH have, have lost their funding and closed down their shelter, we, we leaned on them a lot, we donated money to them a lot for, for some intervention uh, and getting to know who's out there, where they came from, how old are they, what's their profile, are they a vet, are they a meth head, are they just down on their luck, are they, you know, mentally ill, what the, what's, what, what's their issue? We had um, Mike and Mike on board for many years, um, uh, who were very good at interacting with the homeless, and we, they're still, uh, the guys are still great at doing it, but we just think a dedicated uh, group of people um, to really get to know, you know, identify who these people are and really develop some data on them would be very helpful. So uh, we plan on deploying that program um, uh, relatively soon. And then we think that this is a great pilot program to uh, roll into, if it works, to roll into to next year. It's sort of a new strategy for us. I and mean, it's, it's, it's a similar strategy that you guys have been using, but we just, we'd like to, to see how effective these plain closed, you know, trained liaisons are um, and outreach people as opposed to, you know, these guys are distracted half the time with phone calls and running around all over the place. So um, uh, the main reason we're doing this is because of the path situation and just because of the huge uptick in homelessness and it's, and obviously it's a lot of new people who we don't know. So um, we need to, we need to find out who they are, where they came from, why they're here, things of that nature, yes. Okay. Sounds like a great idea. Um, are you thinking of relocating um, security dollars for this, or is Correct. this we have an additional dollars in this year's cost? Budget. Yeah. Right. So then you'll keep security the same. same. Yeah. Right. So you weren't going to keep security. We can, as we start to work on the budget for next year, if this seems to be <coughs> working and if it's actually allowing us to actually help and engage some folks, then we could possibly figure out how do we implement this more robustly in the 2017 budget. But this gives us a little runway to see, you know, how does this, how does this work? Yeah, in, in our new bid. And so, also in the Yeah, which would, would be very valuable to have this information before we sort of set the guidelines for that, so. What happened to that lady that was here in January that was doing some? That was last year. Last year, that AmeriCorps. Yeah, yeah, that was actually pretty useful because we were able to, um, you know, send her out to talk to people and, you know, if someone's stuck on a bus, bus bench or in an alley, you know, she could go engage and find out who is this person and what do they need help and are they willing to, you know, engage. And so that was really, really helpful. So it's really just a, it's just an information. Yeah, we don't yeah. need a we just wanted to motion on it. We just want to give you a heads up that that's a new strategy we're, we're implementing. Uh, we had our, our meeting yesterday. Um, and, uh, the report from Andrews was similar to what we, what we normally hear. Um, you know, calls are high, high volume, um, a lot of incidents, a lot of violent uh, people out there. Perhaps the most interesting uh, part of the meeting was the LAPD's report, where they had mentioned that the violent crime is up uh, in Hollywood, in the, in the entertainment district itself, 23% over the yeah. summer uh, from last year. In, uh, it's up 15% uh, on, on average across LA. So it's a little bit worse here. Um, so if you sense that, you're, 
you're not just dreaming about something. Yeah, and did they say this for violent crime that's scary? Is it at nighttime or the daytime? Do they go into the time? Frame? They did. I'm wondering if it matched with our security. I'm sure they have that information. I can get it for you. No, um, typically, it's nighttime, right? That's what they tell me. Yeah, and uh, but they've directed resources off of the day to the night, so they kind of kind of cover some of that. Right, and and they are really making an impressive effort to. To battle it, they, they, I don't know if you saw the Metropolitan. They got to call the Metro guys, and they're the ones on the horses there back here today. They've been here a lot. Vice was here a lot um, uh, until that Spice thing went down in Skid Row, where people are you know dying or almost dying from whatever their the drug dealers are selling them down there. So we lost them for a couple of weeks. They're coming back next week. Um, and you know they've just got a, a very robust uh, uh, patrol, you know, numbers and lots of cars, lots of bodies, for, you know, bike patrols. So they're doing everything they can. I think, as Steve mentioned, really the reality is is that we we found out that a lot of these people who were nonviolent offenders who were released from jail are actually violent guys, and they're creating these violent crimes. And. Um, uh, you know, they just fled down to whatever, or their situations changed and they're more desperate. But, but there's a whole new demographic out there that wasn't here a couple of few years ago. He also mentioned that they've been pretty proactive on um, tapping the drug dealers in the last two months or so, right. that they're able to start to see the statistics drop because a lot of these folks are involved in um, theft and, and aggravated assault or whatever. So. The trend is starting to turn, yeah. whether they can sustain it. Yeah, because the drug dealers prey on the homeless. And uh, so, yeah, they're trying to they're trying to improve the situation by addressing those guys. Um, anything else, Carrie, that I'm missing? Um, no, we have my friend's place here, um, who, uh, Heather, uh, no, okay. to, uh, we gave my friend's place a grant last uh, winter or fall to work on youth. Mm -hmm. engagement and I know um, you wanted to give us a little bit of an update. So we're about six months through that. We just want to take the opportunity to be able to share the impact of uh, your investment, your partnership. Uh, this is, I'm Heather Carmichael. I'm the executive director at my friend's place. Susan Dutra is our development director. Oh, I have to turn my back hard. It's really going to be. Um, I have, uh, alongside of you, uh, loved and let lead here in Hollywood. Um, I am always so honored to be among all of you as you thoughtfully figure out how to continue to uh, create a community of health, inclusion, and vibrancy. So thank you for affording my friend's place to be a part of that. Um, very specifically, um, you in, have invested uh, $10,000 in my friend's place. Uh, for the discreet uh, intention for us to engage in intentional outreach, partnering with the bid around uh, case management support and housing uh, support services for young people. So we wanted to share a little bit about the impact of uh, how far we've gone for this past six months. So, um, so far um, during this time period, 963 young people have come to my friend's place. Um, you can see over 11,000 times in six months. Uh, 411 of those young people were new to us during this period. And <coughs> as you mentioned, right, we're seeing a lot of uh, new faces. New faces. Yeah. Um, and if you have not yet been to my friend's place, we welcome uh, your visit uh, to come check out what we're doing. Because I know we look like ruckus from the outside. Mm -hmm. We are ruckus. But there are some really beautiful things happening in my friend's place with young people that are super distrustful, people who are like me, a clinical social worker, um, and are very trained staff. So when young people are coming to my friend's place, uh, there is a host of opportunities awaiting them. Uh, from research, we know that it only takes uh, about three months of street exposure for them to root themselves in um, their street kind of families. It's a very small window of opportunity until we're really arm wrestling with uh, survival behavior. 
So um, in this time period, uh, 338 young people have engaged in our case management services. And we have clinical social workers that are trained to work with the young adult population in the myriad of mental health, substance use, and then some really um, hardcore advocacy that happens in the world, from them getting their benefits, to getting on the housing wait list, to taking care of reconnection to family, all of those really amazing things. You can also see, as you know, and you see the distress in our uh, folks who are living in our community without housing resources, um, it's very, very stressful. Um, and most of these young people come from backgrounds that they have been uh, pretty uh, darn hurt, uh, physically, sexually, emotionally, so the vulnerability is very high. Um, in this time period, we've assessed 13 young people for suicidality. Uh, 15 additional youth receive crisis intervention for mental health deterioration, uh, six young people for victimization assessment. And these are like fever pitch crisis. Everyday young people are coming in in crisis and staff are attending to them. Kind of the mind, body, soul, holistic approach. So um, young people often do not want to interact with us as though they are victims. Uh, they are young people growing up and they're doing the best they possibly can given their circumstances. Many young people come to us and say, I don't want your housing. It's program. I just came from foster care, not interested, but I am interested in a job. What can you do to help me there? So we've really taken that opportunity to engage young people in services. It's a little bit sneaky. It's like, come get to know us through our employment services. Um, so to date, uh, 142 young people have been engaged in our employment services. 14, 40 young people have secured employment. I doubt 40 young people have actually maintained employment. In the, in the scheme of being in such distress, young people have a hard time maintaining that. We're kicking off a pilot program um, in about a week or two that's really an on-site intensive um, employment skills training and social emotional training so that young people can learn the soft skills that are needed to thrive in any one of their businesses. So, you know, right, these are young people living without housing. We know in uh, our service area, there on the point in time was over a thousand young people living in our neighboring communities um, without housing. We know that there are more young people than there are actually beds to hold them. Um, but we do some pretty darn amazing housing work um, and we have been a part of the youth community, uh, youth, uh, coordinated engagement system. So really making sure that Hollywood is leading the way in how to assess young people and get them into the right size kind of housing. So um, you'll see that young people in housing is working for some and it's not working for others. And that has a, for a host of reasons. Um, immediate shelter for young people, uh, really important. Um, 28 got it, four lost it. Uh, for per, uh, permanent housing, uh, permanent supported housing, which works really, really well for uh, people who are going to be a lifetime consumer of services. Um, we've got 10 young people in, five lost it. And I'm happy to talk with folks you know, at another point about all of those dynamics. Another part, uh, transitional age youth, uh, transitional housing makes a lot of sense. Uh, three young people got in, four lost. That means from out in that time period, somebody already had it. Um, this work is super, super precious, and I just want to uh, contextualize it a little bit because you all know my friend's place, you know where we're located, and you all probably also are aware of that group of young people who are stationed in from Tommy's. The great discomfort about having uh, sometimes four, sometimes 10, or even more young people that are shifting from uh, the, the freeway yard to the sidewalk. Um, so like always, bring on the, the hard conversations. I'm always open uh, to doing that, but I did want to share with you a little bit about those young people. Um, I worked with Erin, who is our program director, um, about who's in that crew right now. Three of those folks are uh, not in our, our services, but there are five young people who are living um, in that dirt patch and on the sidewalk that are all headed towards housing. 
Um, two, no, it's three young people had vouchers but have not yet found uh, a place that will actually take those. Another young woman, a woman is in the midst, uh, she is now expecting a child and is soon to get into St. Anne's and her partner is uh, desperately looking to try to reunify with a family member or a mentor. So. Often these young people are hard in the community, but many of them are really actually doing some pretty incredible work when they are not um, having to sit curbside waiting for the community to find the right size housing interventions for them. So um, we recognize that um, I'm sure my friend's place can do better. Um, and we are interested in that feedback but please know that 100 young people a day are coming in and we are uh, quickly and sometimes slowly making uh, subtle and radical changes happen uh, through the opportunities that you afford, that the larger city and county affords. Um, we're super proud to be a part of this community, super proud to be a part of the good as property owners, and really honored uh, that you uh, decided to invest in us and to see the impact of that. So I'm happy to answer questions. I know time is limited, or you're always all welcome to come to my friend's place. I would just say briefly that um, my friend's place has been an asset to our security team, so we don't often say that about those kind of entities, but we do go down there some. We try to, yes. in a sensitive way, maintain the peace, but, but we do consider them positive influence. We consider you an amazing partner, um, and we're very excited um, if you endeavor on the outreach person. Uh, we've offered to have that person be a part of, when we have trainings come, that person can be a part of our team um, as much as it makes sense for uh, your team. So we're very grateful for this partnership. It's good yeah, to have yeah. progress. Yeah, yeah. yeah progress is good. Yeah. John, to your point, though, originally, I wonder if we can maybe work with some of our partners who have boots on the ground and kind of... We should adapt. Absolutely. The first thing that, that, that our, our outreach person should do is just get a big head start. Absolutely. Finding out who all these people are without having to go recreate the wheel. Yep. Right? We're very close to starting, as we know. Okay. Yeah, I think that's literally one of the first things we should do. <laughs> So, but we'll take you up on that, Heather. Fantastic. We look forward to it. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, and the last, yeah, the minute I walk. So, we had talked, because always we plan around a lovely schedule. As well as we have some new I walk, and, um, which I'm completely open to doing as well. So, um, this would be the idea would be to go out from midnight to 3 or, or 2 to 3, just to kind of get the lay of the land in, in Hollywood. So, um, can I just show a hand sign again on who would be interested in doing this? Frankfurt, okay. Leslie, Tony. Well, what day of the week? I'd be interested. It'd probably be a Friday. Okay. Yeah. Just because by the time Saturday, you need to kind of like pay the weekend. So, let me get those names again um, Tony, Chad, Frank, um, who else? Leslie. Leslie. Okay. Julie, yeah. Evan. Uh, Leslie. Else? I'll be there as a shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'll do a little poll that we'll do it when you're back, you know, and if you're traveling and whatnot. Yeah. But I'll be here for a while up in okay, October, October, November. November. Yeah. Um, and it's it's really eye opening. So we'll we'll uh, we'll plan a, a, a an evening. Okay. That's all for security. Yeah, that's all I got. Okay. Great. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, Alyssa sends her regrets. She got pulled away last minute to a uh, work. It's marriage already to each end. That fallen chain husband. So we'll start with a quick update on Street Plus, our new maintenance vendor who started 15 days ago. Who has seen them out on the streets? They're in the blue, bright blue polos. A couple of you already? Yeah. Good, so we do have Sorry. a greater right here walking in. Yeah. yeah. He was actually sweeping the little inside of somebody's, you know, um, you know, where like you have a recessed door right there, so he was going above and beyond, yeah, not just worried about the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah, they're working hard out there, they are finding their rhythm. Um, 
a lot of moving parts, as, as you can imagine. But um, the first thing that they kind of brought to our attention was the amount of illegal dumping that's taking place. Um, the problem is a little worse than we were aware, but um, the, the trash issue is that they, they empty trash cans and a lot of shop owners actually uh, get rid of their their business generated trash and put them in the sidewalk cans and fill it immediately. So um, that's something we're going to have to figure out how to address. Um, we're talking about securing them with locks and even getting some domed lids as well. So we're thinking that we'll be able to uh, handle that issue. Um, Joe's going to talk a little bit more about the, the change order you have in front of you, but. Um, we are right now, we do not have all of the capital equipment we purchased delivered yet. Um, we're still on about a, another two week uh, timeline until we get um, the remaining equipment, but we do have rentals in the meantime. They're not as fully featured as, as the equipment we're buying, but we're making do uh, until that stuff is delivered. So. Um, with that, Joe, do you want to talk about the change? Yeah, just order? really, this is really simple, should be at least this uh, change order in your packet here. Um, we were just amending the contract to reflect. We purchased some additional equipment after the um, start, just from them being out there and kind of getting a lay of the land. They realized that there was a couple more pieces that they needed. Uh, those pieces are highlighted in green here. We just purchased an extra Taylor Dunn. We had two, now we have three and we added a pickup truck to solely do trash removal from the cans like that. We said we're finding there's a lot of trash out there. And so we added those pieces. The other thing that we did was um, we purchased a dedicated pressure washing unit for the alley. And the alley is also, the alley assessment, which everybody recalls those who are adjacent to an alley pay about $137,000 a year. And that money goes towards maintenance and security services in the alley. And uh, we had a little bit of a surplus this year in that alley budget. So we were proposing taking that money and paying for that capital equipment now instead of advertising it. Um, everything is done within the budget parameters of what the contract says. So there's, there's nothing there that's gonna change. We will be on budget and even possibly below. But um, we just wanted to bring this to your attention so we can get a motion in a second to add this to the contract just to reflect the other equipment that we purchased and the payment schedule going forward. I'll move this Thank you so much. Sorry. All second. Any questions? Okay, so I'll move to the next item. So those of you who were at our all property owners meeting, we gave a little sneak peek of some of the artwork that's been submitted for our utility box artwork program. We brought this to the board a few months ago, but we're proposing to wrap uh, 10 utility boxes along the Walk of Fame with uh, custom artwork from a local artist. So um, the, uh, the Hollywood Arts Council is our partner in this, and they've been given the task of kind of curating the art. So. They received over 40 submissions from artists and uh, they narrowed them down to what they thought were the, the best, uh, or the, the top 10. Um, so the Streetscape Committee will review these and then bring to the board uh, their top three choices for, for you to consider. Um, and the, the parameters of this, um, of this artwork project is uh, that any art has to be Hollywood centric. So it's really up to the artist to, you know, whatever their interpretation of that is. So. These are some of the, uh, the submissions. These are all from, from one artist. Um, so one artist will be creating 10 pieces for us. I won't charge you that was part of my building there, but yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, we gotta make sure. If Mike was there. Okay, we gotta make sure the artist has permission to, to use these photos. But um, just to give you a sense of the different types of mediums that the artists are considering, this is a pretty well-known artist, wordsmith, um, there's a lot of work through, throughout Los Angeles. Hollywood icons, kind of an urban take on, on the city right here. Again, some uh, interior shots uh, and some exterior shots of, uh, of Hollywood landmarks. Again, some more uh, old Hollywood icons. And then this one was a, a take on a kind of retro old Hollywood postcard uh, theme. And again, uh, some uh, illustrations. So um, 
Yeah, we'll be taking this to the committee at the end of the month, and then we will be coming back to you for uh, approval the following month. Any questions about that? That's a great time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're really excited about what we received, and hopefully we'll have these installed by the end of this year. Yeah.